itself. My talk is divided into six parts. What is biodiversity and why it's important. We'll then discuss the threats that biodiversity faces and what we can do about it. So the first question, what is biodiversity? Well, biodiversity is quite simply all the life that surrounds us. And because it's all around us, we sometimes forget, it's very easy to forget how important biodiversity is. Because every season brings its own story. So that is biodiversity, it's all around us. What, why is it important? It's important because biodiversity is our life support system. The average adult uses the oxygen from 18 trees over their lifetime, over, sorry, over a year, the average adult uses the oxygen from 18 trees. And of course the trees use the carbon dioxide that we exhale. All our food comes from biodiversity. One in three mouthfuls of food comes from pollination by bees. And while most pollination in Ireland is carried out by insects, a little as some is carried out by wind, that's mainly cereals and grasses, um, but our vegetables and our fruit come from the insects. In fact, insects have been called the little things that run the world. Apart from pollination, insects also decompose the food and organic matter, they're soil engineers, and they're food for other animals. To be healthy, we need nutritious food, which depends on soil fertility, and insects and microorganisms break down organic matter. Forests trap pollutants in our air, and store carbon, really important in today's climate situation. And of course we use wood every day. We get medicines from plants. Uh, many of us are familiar with penicillin and the cephalosporins, which comes from, come from the fungus. And there are numerous um, physiological systems, respiratory and anesthetic, well, the gastrointestinal and arthritic uh, uh, illnesses that benefit from medicines and drugs and anesthetics, of course. Um, Paclitaxel, a drug found in chemotherapy, was found through just random screening of 35,000 plant samples. And there are more medicines to come. At the moment, research is ongoing into painkillers and wound healing from snails. We also can learn about our physiology. Now, I know polar bears aren't in this con relevant to this context, it just makes the point about our physiology that bears, while they don't eat or drink for almost six months, they, they can give birth and mother bears can nurse their offspring while not eating or drinking. Now, if we were in that situation, we wouldn't survive. And if we did manage to survive, we would have diabetes, renal failure and osteoporosis. And their diseases we could learn more about from the animal kingdom. Also, exposure to biodiversity reduces our stress. And many um, <clears throat> reports show that blood pressure and, is, and pulse rate drop when we're in, in our natural environment. And finally, our psychological and spiritual well being is enhanced by private moments in the natural world. So many of you may have heard Professor John Fegan speak. He's a wonderful man. And he has written in one of his books, he has this sentence, which I think says an awful lot. That there is more to amaze, more to wonder us, more to bring us to our knees in the lives of wild things, in ponds, bogs, and woodlands, than our short lifetime can ever encompass. Just two examples, the early gig beetle on most ponds has eyes on top of its head and under its head so that we can see, it can see both up and down, in, sorry, in the sky and in the water. Uh, that's incredible, I think. And then the little larvae of caddisfly makes this fantastic house for itself. 
a little larger to be able to do that. And we have <clears throat> over 15,000 species, not including microorganisms, we have 15,000 species of plants and animals in Ireland. And of course, there are so many microorganisms, more microorganisms in a teaspoon of soil than there are people on Earth. So Irish biodiversity, is it under threat? Well, Minister Jossie Stephen Madigan says that biodiversity in Ireland demonstrates worrying and ongoing declines. It is shocking to know that only 10%, the status of 10% of our species have been assessed. And of those, one in five is threatened with extinction. I think that's incredible. Bigger. It's very sad to know that two thirds of all our bird species are heading towards extinction. And over a quarter of Irish bird species are now on the red list, indicating the highest level of concern. This was a report on um, earlier this year by Birdwatch. And these are birds that we normally see. We used to have a lot of curlews in, in Ireland. Now we're very much on the brink of extinction. And the corn bunting was last seen in Mayo <clears throat> in the mid 90s. Butterflies are in trouble too. Their populations have declined by 12% in the last 10 years. And 18% of our native butterflies are under threat of extinction. This is one of them, the wall butterfly. Bumblebee numbers have fallen 14% in the last 10 years. Tree bee species have become extinct in the last eight years. And a third of all bee species in, in Ireland, bee species in Ireland could be extinct by 2030. A report in that all this year, earlier this year, reports that the majority of Irish fishing boats don't catch fish now, they catch crabs and lobsters. And the freshwater pearl mussel, Ireland's longest living animal, is facing extinction. Plants are in trouble too. 20 species are critically endangered. This is one of them, a little bog plant. The corn cockle is extinct and 54 other plants are in danger, species are in danger. And meadow saxifrage was declared extinct in 1986. But what are the threats? What are the threats facing our biodiversity? Well, I have five listed here, habitat loss, pollution, climate change, invasive, invasive species, sorry, and population growth. We'll go through them all briefly. Habitat loss. Well, it's quite interesting to see that the birds, the corn bunting, and the meadow saxifrage. Meadow and corn indicate one reason <clears throat> it's changed agricultural practices um, that have caused the decline in some of our species. The most recent assessment of all types of Irish habitat over 80% were classified as unfavourable or bad. This is a National Parks and Wildlife Service report over 80% and we all need a place to live. Ireland's forest cover at 10.9% is the lowest in Europe and less than a third of the average EU figure. And only 0.6% of our active raised bog remains. Our hay meadows, wetlands and sand dunes have slipped silently away from us. We go on to pollution. Um, one third of our rivers and a quarter of our lakes fail environmental standards. Chemical spills. This is a fish kill in Offaly. And indeed, pesticides are designed to kill living creatures. In parts of China, pollination is now carried out by hand because the insects have been killed by pesticides. 
and research in Ireland has shown the adverse impacts of toxic chemicals on wildlife in the Shannon and in the Little. Pollution. Well, plastic pollution is a, a whole area in itself that we use 80,000 tons of plastic packages every year. It's an incredible figure, 80,000 tons. And it's, synthetic clothing has a big, big role to play in this. Both plastics and polyester and acrylic fibers are a significant source of microplastics in our rivers and seas. When they're broken down by weathering and time, these little microplastic particles are found. And they are ascending the food web in Ireland. In eggs, seabirds' eggs in Galway, they've been found in fish in the Black Corrib and in Irish mains water. And very worryingly, they are also, they're also in our food web. Um, there's a little video, if you like to Google the words plankton eating microplastics, you will, it's a, a 50 second video seeing plank, plankton eating microplastics. And that's the bottom of the food web for all of us. Sorry, now the thing is not even. Uh, uh, climate change now. We're all aware of climate change in this graph showing the increase in temperatures. And this will affect our biodiversity as well. Climate change will occur more rapidly than species can adapt. And with the seasons more advanced, for example, for maybe less caterpillars to feed the birds, the, the young of the birds when they arrive, everything is so interlinked. This is the National Jack Toad and the Atlantic Salmon. salmon. They will, their figures, their numbers will decrease significantly as temperatures get warmer. Invasive species is another cause of biodiversity loss. I just mentioned two here, curly waterweed and the Japanese mushroom. And finally, and this is the last point, consumption. The average Irish household, it's hard to believe it, disposes of just under one tonne of rubbish a year. And a very important contribution that we all can make to the well-being of our biodiversity is to reduce our consumption of the Earth's resources. It's hard to believe that we use and a million tons of food as waste every year in Ireland. So, final point: What can we do? Well, quite simply, our way of life must enhance our life-giving and life-affirming biodiversity, not undermine it. And it's very important to realise it's the individual choice made billions of times a day that count the most. What can we do personally? Well, we can reuse and recycle and buy locally. Uh, we're all aware of palm oil, how it's in almost everything and its contribution to the devastation in, of forests in Asia. But even here, to reduce our demands on the Earth's resources by buying locally, growing our own food, purchasing goods that are produced locally, of course, wearing natural fibers, plant pollinator friendly. Plants. We can see that on pollinators.ie. We can do recordings for the National Biodiversity Database. Leave part or all of our garden free for wildlife. And join organizations such as the Colin Community for Climate Action. As I've mentioned a few here, but there are many. Social Justice Ireland, Voice, Friends of the Environment. Nationally, we need to put our biodiversity action plans on a legal footing. We need a biodiversity officer in each county. We need more labelling on foods, on the miles travelled, the sprays used, and the potential for microplastics on clothes. And the media has to record what's important. It is really important to know what KD is doing or has he come to Ireland. It's so important though to know if the first swallow has arrived or has the neighbour flowered in it. And Big point, we need a new economic system. People talk about overall GDP growth and it's gone up and it's great news, but we need a new measure of progress. And at this point, I would draw your attention to FASTA, an organization. Uh, it means forever in Irish, and it comes from the word from Kilkosh, the poem, it's called the enemy FASTA. And FASTA is studying economics as if the future matters. 
and it looks for alternative methods of assessing progress of economies. There's one book um, on economics, um, alternative economics, human thriving depends on planetary, planetary thriving is a quote from it, but um, there are other books as well that look at alternative ways of running our country. And we need to look at the world enough. So much of our economic talk talks about growing and bigger and better and increasing consumption. We have to know what the word enough means. And Anne Ryan, who's from the Newt, has written a book called Enough is Plenty. And this is a quotation from it. Enough puts us back in touch with the part of us that understands, understands beauty and strength and that empathizes with the rest of creation. We are richer, not when we have the latest iPad, but we are richer when we know our friends, our friends, and we know our neighbours, we know what trees are most common in our area, what's the most common bird, where the nice black things grow. We get to know our neighbours, our urban neighbours. So the two messages from my talk really would be, the future must be more locally based. And second, we need a new economic system. And uh, we were building a motorway in, uh, some time ago and concerns about the impact that this might have on a small snail were ridiculed. But now I think we have to say, where was our, where are exactly are our motorways and other signs of progress headed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Liz. That, that was brilliant. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I said to you when I watched it before, when you look at the, the, the beautiful images of nature and then sort of put that side by side with the, the stark facts about what we're losing. And I suppose also how we're, we're continuing behaviours that are continuing to do damage. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it, it just, it, it gives a lot to think about. And um, so I'm going to invite everybody who is happy to be recorded to turn on their videos and we can maybe start looking at some of the topics. Now, I just had put together some ideas, which Liz has kind of already covered, but I suppose the idea of, of what we can do as individuals, I think is a pretty powerful one because, you know, I think in the face of, of sort of global news about climate change, it, it can make us feel um, sort of helpless, I guess. But in terms of biodiversity and in terms of loads of things, the little things that we can do personally, the little choices that we make can have a big difference, you know? So I just like, what do people think? I know like one, one thing we've done here has been to let a little bit of our garden grow wild. Now our garden is just a housing estate, a very small garden, but we we have let the, the back bit of it just we, we stopped mowing um a couple of years ago and it at the moment it's like so full of buttercups and little flowers and insects and it's like it's absolutely magical it really is so is anybody else any um questions or comments on things we might be able to do don't be shy. <laughs> Mark, have you got anything, any suggestions? Oh, if you want to use chat, if somebody has a question, maybe for Liz or for Lily, yeah. Yeah, community for climate action. Or or yeah, or comments or anything if if you know if you don't want to appear on video, that's fine. Um um so other things you were saying, Liz, as well, the, the idea, um, as you know, because we, we, we've had chats about this, the, the idea of overconsumption, like this idea that we constantly, constantly have to be 
buying new things, yeah. getting new things, producing new things. Um, I think that's something like I've tried to sort of move away from a little bit in the last while. Um, and I, I kind of, you know, yeah, look at sort of recycled sites or, you know, borrowing or upcycling or keeping things that I already have. I, you know, I don't need, I don't need a lot of stuff at this point. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think advertising has a lot to play, has a big role to play here. I think we're bombarded with buy, yeah. buy, buy. And uh, we don't need all this stuff. We really don't. Um, I think there should be a limit on the amount of advertising that we're exposed to. Yeah. Uh, and Christmas just fills me with dread when I see all the, um, the yeah, yeah, just the, yeah. our earth cannot take all these yeah. demands we're putting on it. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's, um, there's, um, I'm not sure if he's exactly an economist, but I, I think he might be an anthropologist, but uh, his name is Jason Hickel and he, he writes extensively about the idea of degrowth and he's actually put together some uh, like quite shocking statistics about, you know, the amount of stuff, the amount of materials um, that if we keep going at the rate we're going, will we'll sort of be produced and how completely it is just so in opposition to actually tackling climate change, you know, on, on, on so many different levels. You're already consuming one and a half times the planet in terms of thing. George Mom yeah. talked recently and he said that's, that's the present consumption is one and a half times. Yeah. So, yeah. that's why the resources are running at you know like at, at alarm alarming rates um but it ju just talking about biodiversity and, and things that i've you know tried I, i've always loved nature but um i suppose be more conscious of uh cli the climate crisis and, and the biodiversity crisis really things i've kind of you know started to do myself is um you know i, I use facebook like, like everybody you know to keep in contact with people but i kind of made a conscious choice to kind of use it um promote our biodiversity so i did things like you know um i think national tree week that kind of um promote different of, of our native trees and just to, to, to i suppose encourage people to, to to really value what we what we have but you know um because we all do see all, all the other messages about um consuming and you have to have this and the latest iphone and blah 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 you know we don't see enough of what is out there and, and to appreciate it another thing i, I did as well last year um volunteered to the county of swifts in, in cullen uh, and the yeah. catholic church and then um, uh I, i'm doing it again this year actually a person who trained us how to do it is really sad actually and um, paddy, paddy paddy's second name off, off, off the top of my hand and um, he died actually just before christmas it's really sad but he trained myself and another uh, uh, lady lisa evers you know what what to do and how to count them and stuff and it's amazing because um, just recently went one night went down and they were they put on this incredible show where they were you know swooping in and out of their nest, um, you know in the ease of the church, but they were kind of darting around and, and I, I like this might sound crazy, but I think they were really happy to have me there because I was giving my consciousness towards the the boards and and I, I think animals you know really that you know. Um, they really do respond and, and nature responds to us and we care for it. I mean, people all know about plants and talking to your plants and stuff apparently helps them grow. But I think also when, when we pay attention to the environment in, in obviously in a, in a benevolent way, because it gives so much to us as, as Liz has told us, um, that, that actually the environment responds back, you know, um, it, you know, and I think so raising that consciousness about, about the environment is, is so important. And, and it's not just obviously for us, it's for our children and grandchildren and generations uh, ahead of us. But, but I think just even things like that, I, mean, I record stuff in the, the biodiversity data center as well. Um, with an app, there's an app you can get, you can download and if you spot a butterfly or, you know, um, it's like, it's like a bee and it, um, it, it, there's, there's ways of well, identifying them and then record it. It's really important, as Liz said, you know, for, for the, the, the data center to have all this data, you know, to know state of play with, with our um insects you know so anyway there, there's a couple of things that i um 
I, I've done myself, you know, and I just think it's, Good. yeah, look, there's little small steps, that's, that's all they are. Yeah. I'll start up now. <laughs> but they're great things, Mark. Well, well done. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy, you know, it's something I enjoy anyway, you know, I, 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 got, I absolutely love nature. It's, it's my um, church, you know, to go to go walk in the nature. That, that, that's my, uh, my, my, yeah, my, my veneration, my church, my, my adoration. That's, that's, I absolutely adore nature, you know, so. That's why I hate it. It makes me very sad to hear, uh, you know, the destruction you know, that goes on, you know, and the carelessness about it. It, it just, it, it, it's, it's what sustains us. It's, you know, we're biting the, the hand that feeds us, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's not, it's insane, actually. It is insanity, you know. Yeah. I think I, I was at a, um, a sustainable energy of Ireland conference the other day and uh, Dr. Tara Shine was giving the introductory speech but she made the point which which I've heard before but I, I think it's I think you could repeat it endlessly that um, the earth doesn't need human beings but but we we can't actually survive without biodiversity we, we literally yeah. the human race cannot survive so um now I just uh Liz or anybody, uh Don had a question in relation to biodiversity officers. And is there anything practical we can do to lobby for this? Well, we have made a submission to the Kildare County Council to have a biodiversity officer for the county. At the moment, um the heritage officer has the remit for biodiversity and it's too much mm -hmm. and uh, so we have we have um written into the council about that so unless you want to say something about that Lena but we have um, written to the council about it yeah I, I I my particular interest in in general in relation to climate change is grassroots movements and how we can change things from the bottom up it, it, like it is the most powerful way to affect change so I would suggest uh, there's a few different avenues I mean first of all get on to your local councillors get on to your TD um, you know anytime there is a Kildare County Council regularly puts out uh, consultation documents and it, the whole process is actually it's a lot easier now it used to be very very unwieldy and you know you to post things in or or type things up and read masses of stuff but but the format of late um certainly for the last couple i have done has been a lot easier it's an online form you know there might be kind of multiple choice questions um I think as well, just, yeah, get involved in local groups, get like the council has SPCs, which are strategic policy committees. Um, and those, there is a climate um, action and environment uh, strategic policy committee. And that is another way to influence um, what is going on. You can also, um, in, in terms of that, the public participation network, which every group uh, can join once you have a minimum of five members, the PPN elects representatives to the strategic policy committees within the council so they can bring the views of the groups, I suppose, into to council level. Um, I mean, it's, you know, any one of those things helps. But I think if we all try to do kind of a, a mixture, I you know, I think that the more voices, the better, basically. So hopefully, hopefully that answered your question. Contact the council really in any way you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 And every, everything matters. And because it's over, as you were saying, Cleana, because it can be overwhelming, don't give up. Every little thing matters. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, okay, question there from uh, Brian Byrne. The message is going out there in many different ways, but is there any indication that it is being accepted and actioned at a level where a real difference can be made? 
by individuals, local and national governments before we tip over to beyond coming back? Um, that's a big question. Uh, I I can I can answer some of that or Liz, do you want to? No, I'm happy to leave it to you, Tina. Yeah, it's okay. a good question. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just gonna get a drink of water. Um, okay, there's it. I think first of all, on the on the on the global scale, there are you know international climate agreements. Um, so they sort of um, they filter down basically to our own national government, and and that's partly where the, the the climate action bill has come in, which is sort of still in the stages of being put through legislation. Um, so from the, the the national government climate action bill, and from the institutions that are kind of tied into that, uh, the the local councils then have instructions to to do things, and I like I have to say like I work I work in a local council in the climate action team and I have to say I have seen uh, in the last year certainly uh, like a massive drive the, the message is and, and Mark probably has seen it as well through the libraries there there has been a massive drive to like a, a genuine commitment and um also, you know, measurable kind of indicators. This is kind of a very no nonsense approach. It's like you need to do this on biodiversity. You need to do this on carbon emissions. You need to do this, um, you know, on on sort of the other kind of areas as well. So I I personally would say that um, we're Ireland is is an absolute disaster in terms of carbon emissions where we've depended on basically trading schemes to um, avoid massive fines or to kind of keep us kind of, you know, sort of being, <laughs> doing what we're supposed to do, but, but really our backs are against the wall now at this point in terms of um, EU requirements. So I think that's probably where a lot of this energy is coming from. Um, but what do you think, Mark? You, you've probably seen it as well through where. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. Um, I mean, Kildarekin Council, I, I'm a librarian of Kildarekin Council, but we're all, we're signed up to the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan. Um, so there's an onus on the council to actually take action in that regard. And, and also uh, the, the, the National the Biodiversity Action Plan, there's the individual ones, in, in, in obviously, you know, there's one for Colin, but, um, but you know the, the councils have signed up for that, and, and plus, you know, there's, there's a climate uh, action officer in each council now. You know, um, so they are they are you know committed uh, um, by by law actually to, to to take on certain things. So, but that that is in place, and, and it is making. You know, you can, you, I'm sure people are aware that Clare County Council now have changed their approach to like they're not spraying. Um, uh, you know, they, they tried this out last year where they they didn't cite. And, the, and they, they consulted with the public and there was an overwhelming majority of people were in favour of not not spraying and, and cutting nets and stuff like that. It was a resounding success. Um, so it, it's great because it gave them the mandate to, to, to continue with that and, and to not cut as, as more and not to, not to use um, herbicides and stuff. So that, that, that's a huge change. Um, so no, and we're, the library itself, we're involved in the Growth Forward campaign um, the whole idea of that is that you, you exchange seeds or you or you, you, you grow something and you share it with somebody and then it, it's grown it's called growing forward and um, and so all the local schools will be got seeds through us um, and, and and part of that will be also information as well for for, for you know and how to grow and, and, and different talks and, and it'll all be online I imagine at, at the moment but the whole uh, the idea was was to actually where we can give training to, to people on growing stuff themselves so, you know, nationally, there is, there is a lot going on. But as Tina says, we have a long way to go. And unfortunately, the whole credit system with flying is like, it's, 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 it's a total whiz, you know? It really is it's a con job. And it's, just, it's, it's a disgrace. It makes you really angry when I think about it. Um, but it's interesting. Because I see Dawn was here tonight, and she hosted a fantastic talk by Aina Lee Lerner recently. Um, I'm sure everyone knows Aina. And one question I asked, and it was just really, you know, what do people think of the ecocide laws? And, and, and I know it's not a, it's a very new idea um, to me and, and to other people. 
But in France, uh, Macron, um, he went to, he had a citizens' assembly, I think it was something like 98% wanted really strict ecocide laws. So that, that means like severe penalties for, for um, that damaging the environment. Um, and and Aina rightly pointed out, because it was kind of something I was hinting at, was that we had our own ecocide laws back in the Brehan laws, you know. Mm. Um, so we, off, we, we did have a lot more respect for the environment. We just lost it, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, there, I, no, I think to answer your question, Brian, I think that there, is, there is a lot of change, but we needed to do a lot, lot more. Um, and I, I think, yeah, I, the only way you can do that is, is to contact your local politicians and, and through the grassroots movement as well, like Clean is talking about, you know, but, but it is possible. And one, one thing, I, last thing I'll say is, um, I was really, um, uh, you know, the, the last, I think it was the, the last referendum uh, on, on same-sex marriage, and then there was another, it's one after that on, on abortion rights, basically, you know, the, the, the change in the, the, the uh, amending the constitution. And I was like totally blown away by how, how politicized young people were for those two, two referenda. And um, I thought, what a great sign, you know, the pe young people are voting for this, for voting for change. And, and it was such a, like, it was 66% to 30, you know, it was, it was quite a sizable majority. But people come home to vote for stuff like that. And I just really hope that young people stay politicized, that they're, it's their, their future and that they can really make changes. And, and there are signs of that. I definitely think that more people are getting involved in politics than I've never seen before. You know, you know more young people are getting involved. I think that's a really good sign. Yeah, 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 no, thanks for that. Um, just we have a, a couple of more questions there. I just want to say one more thing in relation to um, Brian's point um, or question. Um, making a difference in terms of individuals, I, I do think there is a big movement of people who really, really care about the environment, but I, I think there's also a lot of people who don't really understand what it's about. And I think the media has a really big role to play in this. I think our national media are completely failing us yeah. in terms of, of making climate, um, you know, awareness a, a regular sort of feature. So that's, I think that needs a lot of work. Um, so thanks for that question. That, that was a good one. Um, now, Maria says, thank you very much for your action. And what do you think about changing our food system? In order to eat locally, we would have to bring back diversity to Irish agriculture, maybe more organic farms. Can you see hope here? Um, Liz, I'm going to, if, if it's OK, I'm going to let you answer that because I know you're really passionate about local food. Yeah, well, it would be nice to have more uh, local markets here and I think that's one of our long-term aims in Kilcullen uh, for community action is to have a, a local market in Kilcullen. Um, yeah, um, I think we just have to support uh, our local farmers when they are selling locally. I know there are markets in Kildare and Newbridge um, and there's a, yeah, I, I don't know what we can do apart from that, just supporting where it, Oh, his, his connection's gone, is it? We're losing you slightly there, Liz. You could maybe try turning your camera off sometimes. I think that helps. Oh, that's a pity. Yeah, I'll just... Um, I'll let you continue, Liz, when you come back in. I'm just going to just quickly jump in on that just while we're waiting. Um, yeah, um... Agriculture, unfortunately, is the the biggest em emitter. Um, Ireland is just not basically is not tackling this problem at all. Um, and absolutely more diversity, more organic farms, regenerative agriculture is the way to go i think and you know but but within a system that is fair for farmers as well because you know we do, we depend on farmers for our food and they they deserve you know a, a sort of an income the same as everybody else so i think part of the problem is that a lot of the irish agricultural policies are just contrary to you know, regenerating the land. Um, like for example, 
I think it was Mark who showed me a, a picture recently. Apparently, farmers get a a, a subsidy for bird boxes. Um, so it was a picture of of a hedgerow which had been completely destroyed. So obviously, hedgerows are are you know their habitats for birds. Um, and perched on top of it was a row of of neat bird boxes, and I just um that really summed it up for me, you know. So um, that was just, I, and I think that is also actually connected to the, the fires in Kerry as well. The, the practice of setting fires has been because farmers have to have um, grazable, like arable land. So they can't actually, and, and they're actually monitored by, by satellite as well. So if, if they fail to meet the requirements for arable land, then basically they will lose some of their income, you know, so, so there isn't a, a real incentive there. So I think what we need to do is, is look at um, agricultural policy, EU policy, you know, ensuring that, that we have a fair transition to a better style of farming, I suppose. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, do you want to come in and say anything on that, Mark? Or Sorry, we... uh, no, just Liz is coming back. I was just, just. Oh, great. OK, <laughs> perfect. OK. Yeah. Liz, Hi, Liz. You're on mute, Liz. <laughs> Just need to unmute. Yeah, no, we're good. She's gone. Oh, yeah. sorry, I know I'm on the phone. I, I can't get the internet. Oh, okay. <laughs> no worries, no That's worries. Fine. Do you want to do you want to add in anything about that? Because I know you're really passionate about local food, and I suppose like that is one thing we can all do. Really, you know, support our local farmers. I mean, we're very lucky where we live that that we have a whole range of people around us. You know, mm. that we can yeah. go and get vegetables from. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think growing our own and yeah, and supporting the local farmers. And I know there are plans to increase. Um, I don't know the details about it, but there are plans to increase the organic growers. So hopefully that will take effect as well. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything uh, else now apart from that. Um, yeah, supporting it and doing our own. The, yeah. demand, demand has gone up for, for organic produce in Ireland quite, you know, um, largely. And um, there is, and you know, but it, 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 it obviously takes time for people to convert to organic and, and stuff. And, and it, it, it's usually quite more labour intensive than, than uh, traditional or mainstream farming. Um, so, well, that's why, yeah. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but it, do we, do we, I, and we're, um, Liz, Liz's brother is an organic farmer. Um, and and we're, we hope to, to the, the, this, this group is to, um, do a directory of local uh, farms and the organic farms and um, uh, like Liz's his brother's farm so people can buy so off you can buy from the farm gate or they'll give you a list of where what markets are at and stuff like that but unfortunately yeah, there isn't one in Kilcullen at the moment it'd be great no, but I think it uh, sorry Mark yeah no I just say I think it boils down to our economic system we should be taxing pesticides and yeah. we shouldn't be taxing labour so much because they're, yeah. they're, organic is more extensive because of the work involved but um, if we just taxed what's dangerous and didn't tax the labour, it would be much easier. Yeah. I oh, know. I, I think, I mean, anyway, I, I think um, with, with a lot of automation in the future, actually, we need, we need jobs. So people uh, doing stuff like, like that, those poor ladies um, pollinating the, the plants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we might have a lot. But no, I, I like, I, yeah, that's what some people say is because it's labour intensive and it, co it, it costs more for them to employ. Yeah, it's, you're right. Totally right. You shouldn't be taxing the, the labour. It should be more the pesticides and that are doing damage to the environment. I totally agree. Yeah, that, um, I have a question from Vivian as well, but I just, Sabina said that Chagasca is not doing enough for biodiversity. I think that's another issue. Um, Chagasca is, is where farmers kind of, uh, you know, where a lot of the sort of the, the knowledge and, and so on comes from. So yeah, they, they really need to do a lot, but we can all, um, Find is just saying that we, we, you know, we can all grow even in a small area, which is, yeah, totally true. Um, I 
just want to go back then to Vivian's question, which is addressed to you, Liz, but I'm also happy to answer it. Um, so it's the point if, if we stop consuming <clears throat> that businesses and industries collapse and people lose their jobs and then society collapses and starvation and wars and then where are we? So, yeah, well, the, the present system isn't working. The present system is killing the planet. We really have no choice but to change our ways. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of work. If we had, if we taxed pesticides, we'd have more work available in farms. And I just think we need to look at the economic system again. People will lose their jobs, but they will get other jobs. And um, there are jobs in the green industry, in green um, areas that, um, yeah, I don't think sticking, this system isn't working. We can't stick to it. No. What was the other I yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> sorry yeah, right. I, I just, I, yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and I think that idea that if we stop consuming, that people will lose their jobs and society collapses and starvation will ensue and wars. Um, I think we're very, very, very privileged in, in this Western society and in, in, in the, you know, the, the sort of wealthy global north as it's called um but unfortunately because of of climate change and because of our levels of consumption people in the poorer areas of the global south are already in situations of famine and war and distress so i mean for me it it, it is you know, I know everybody has a different opinion on this. Um, I, I think economically, we need to look at more sharing economies. We need to look at better distribution of wealth, which is key. Um, yeah. And I also think, I also think it's it's a, a moral question. You know, is it okay for us to be continuously consuming? at the expense of other human beings who are suffering, like literally suffering war and starvation because of our choices, you know, so that's, I know that is a big, it's a, a it's a, a big, it is a big moral sort of topic that you could, you could probably spend hours on alone, but, th but that's my kind of, uh, that's my input on that one. I, I actually went to a talk um, during the, during the year, I, I was one of our trees and, and it was from Chagas and it was from a very different aspect it was about really about how, how to make money from growing trees you know farms uh, grow trees in the land to, to, to make money and, and um, like we're trying to give them this kind of two side two yeah, two messages at the same time it was really strange they were talking about you know not um, using um, uh, uh, Roundup you know but then at the same time but we know you do so if you are going to use it you know so they're kind of pretending to be environmental but not really and um, they, they also they, so they, they also were talking about using uh fertilizing so we we don't really encourage you to fertilize but we know you're going to so so this is how to use them and then they also talked about burning um gorse or burning um you know, we know you probably do this and you shouldn't be doing it but if you're going to do pick you know like we're telling what way to do it, it was really strange you know but they're basically very more or less like they, they take it for granted that this is happening anyway and they can't stop it and, and fair enough like it's, it's not, they can't stop it it's up to its family who are, who are doing it but there's kind of nearly an acceptance of what of these practices um, and, and then trying to pretend they're giving another message so it was very very disappointing like you know at point and really and um, but that, you're yeah. right that, that that's that's government driven but they're mm. you know they, 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 they have such such power in chag is that's that's the problem I think. yeah um just to uh i just see a comment there from vivian that the uh the last question was from brian <laughs> so sorry about that um maria just made the point um which i think is very important as well dietary choices that is you know it is another way that we can make small changes ourselves and it, it kind of does tie into the growing thing as well i think that we can support local and yeah. grow grow ourselves you know grow what we can obviously we can't grow everything but um yeah no definitely cutting down on uh, sort of meat and dairy is and uh, fish has to be one of the elements to be considered it might not be for everybody that's fine you know but definitely it's, it's part of the, the the whole bigger picture um 
And Sabina just said uh, change needs to come through government policy and encouragement. Not enough has been done at the present. Um, I, th I think there, I think that's changing. I do think it is changing. There, there's a much bigger impetus now than there has been in the past. Probably a lot of it because where Ireland is going to have massive, massive fines um, because we're not meeting um, the standards that we have to meet, the, the requirements that we have signed up to under EU uh, policy. So um, I guess it's a bit of a, a stick rather than a carrot, but look, no harm. Um, and I think one of the problems as well is that is that sort of lack of communication or lack of coordination between government departments. So, I mean, if you have the Department of Agriculture basically putting in policies that are, you know, contrary to climate sort of action. And then the, the other department kind of doing this wonderful climate action plan. It's, you know, I guess that that is something that we that, that we need to address as well. But, you know, I think the more people from the ground up, I think the more people get engaged, the more that will change, I hope anyway. You know, I think I think you do have to keep a, a bit of hope because it does sometimes seem like a, a massive insurmountable problem, which yeah. is a, kind of one of the other questions I had suggested um, or topics I had suggested talking about. I, I think people do get very, very overwhelmed and, and the more you read about it and, you know, people have eco anxiety and also, it can have this effect that when you psychologically and, and there's been lots of research done on this, um, that when you're confronted with constant bad news, like human beings have this great capacity to just completely tune it out and pay no attention whatsoever. So I think we do have to, you know, lean on each other I suppose for for support and encouragement and and you know understanding I think as well and acknowledgement that eco-anxiety or or those feelings of of distress are, are a very real you know thing for a lot of people yeah 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 People are welcome to, to join, like rather than put in chat, you're very welcome to come on screen and, and talk. With yeah, you. if anybody's happy to, to turn, up, turn on your video and, and come in, yeah, please do. We have a, a, a suggestion or, or not a question or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Liz. I was just going to say a great antidote against despair, and it is very easy to be overwhelmed, is to do small little actions because they do make you feel a lot better. And just writing to the council or writing to the minister and just saying what you feel, I think that does a lot. And asking them to support local markets and, you know, doing small things, they all add up. They absolutely do. So I don't give up. That's my advice. Definitely. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, sorry, I, I, can I come in there? Yeah, of course, uh, yeah. Please, why not? Yeah, um, just I find personally myself, I agree with you, Kleena, um, we start to switch off um, on news, especially when uh, COVID was on its height, because there was so much about COVID, and I actually felt personally would get depressed about mm -hmm. all the news. So that's a good example about anxiety of you know um especially when things were, were really at its height yeah um but also um i think we should encourage each other encourage your community encourage our friends um uh people who live near you by example even because i know i live in a very idyllic situation as some of you might have read recently in, in the nationalist and, and on brian's podcast I have a great opportunity that I, I have a polytunnel and we have bees and the whole lot. But you can do something very small in the back, uh, in, a, in a patio. You can do something on, you know, on a balcony of a, 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 an apartment. Um, all you need is, a, is a, a little bed or a little pot or something and you can grow, grow lettuce out of that. And um, I think some people are afraid of 
getting into trying things like that. So it's, it's encouragement of each other um, and starting from the bottom up and starting with children. And, you know, I don't know what policies are for, I know the schools are bombarded, with, the teachers are bombarded with all different type of um, education aids and things like that. They do have environmental prop, um, policies and uh, green flags. But certainly if even locally ourselves, if, you know, a, a group of us, a GIY group could get together and just uh, display the harvesting, you know, encouraging um, mm. sowing and things like that. And then maybe approaching someone who does a, an organic farm to have an open afternoon and to talk about it and really start publicizing everything that you do um, locally and encourage it and it, it will take legs then once you do that and people will get going you know yeah. sorry that's why I'm good. <laughs> no no that's yeah they're great points I, I totally yeah. agree um, absolutely yeah definitely yeah. and I think um yeah a tour of an organic farm would be great I, I, I would love that I'd, I'd really mm. enjoy that um, just about your tomatoes in the greenhouse there. <laughs> uh, the Irish weather is not really conclusive to have tomatoes outside unless you have a very enclosed backyard, which is very well sheltered and quite warm. Um, Connor's uncle down in Clock Jordan now grows his tomatoes in his backyard and he's 89 years of age. But um, unless you have a completely well sheltered backyard with good sunlight coming into it, um, otherwise you need a polytunnel or a greenhouse for growing tomatoes or, or a, a, a good patio area, you know. Hold on to your greenhouse then, Maria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, any more questions or comments or does anybody want to come in? Um, People are interested in joining uh, Kilcullen Community for Climate Action. They can, they can email, there's an email address, um, or you can email Kalina um, if you're interested and in, in get involved. And we're only a very small group, not, not so long ago. So do, yeah. And also there's a, a GIY Grow Forward uh, Facebook page for Kilcullen as well. Um, yeah. There are quite a lot of people on it, but not many people uh, participate, but still it's there. And we do swap. Um, there are people who actively swap plants on it, so. Yeah, and the, 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 you, you, uh, the, um, the community for climate action had a, had a seed or plant swap recently. Some of you might have seen it in the town, but there's other events planned for the year. Um, yeah. So watch out, watch the space. But you're, yeah, people are welcome to join. Mm. You know, it, it, uh, it, I think it's just trying, we're trying to build a, a community, I suppose, a way of people of making changes, these small changes as well. And there's no, like some people, you know, would get very much involved. Some people would just like to come to events and stuff, like that, and that's fine, you know, because there'll be all the busy lives and other commitments. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, so it's better to call for, for new members. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always welcome new members. But but I think, yeah, that, that idea of, of doing things that, you know, like the plant swap or like the free books, or, you know, it, it is just kind of opening things up to people and, and showing people you know that here's a positive way to do something which does have an impact and and i think no matter where you're from like if you're interested in growing or in climate action you know you just need to find uh you know a, a few sort of people who are on the same page and just give it a go you know because we we really did start with just i mean we're quite small as it is but you know um we did start with just like you know it was it was two or three of us i think or something you know so but we we've done a lot of stuff there's there is great support um you know and and a, and a great collaborative spirit which to me is kind of what community and community resilience is all about it it is building up those connections with people i guess <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I was just going to ask if people have any more questions or comments. Um, if not, we'll we'll um, we can finish up shortly, I guess. 
and I, I just again just before we do finish like there's plenty of time if people want to have questions but uh, I just want to say thanks again to Liz because I, I, I really enjoyed that presentation and I, I just I like I just for me I think it's really important that we talk about how important nature is for us psychologically and and you know how uh, I mean certainly like Mark and, and like you and, and probably like a lot of us here, I, you know, being out in nature is is such a balm. It, it is such a, you know, it just brings me such absolute joy and, and the thought that we're willfully as human beings decimating the life around us is, is kind of horrifying, you know? So I think anything we can do anything at all we can do as as humans even if it's the tiniest thing you know like letting a, a wild patch grow in your garden that is you know that's that's something that's something great yeah i think yeah. covid's brought um, benefits um because the restrictions the 5k rule and and i'm sure everybody's experiences where they had to you had to stay within your local town and stuff and um, and it was an architect talking about this recently, I can't remember her name, it was on Twitter, but anyway, talking about this, this the five kilometer, five kilometer city, you know, and basically the people had to stay within their certain area. And, you know, so I, like other people have been just going for my walks around Kilcullen, I go every day and get, getting to see a lot more of Kilcullen, you know, the nature as well. But, it, but it, it's just nice because you're doing everything locally, you know, not traveling, not using a car. Um, so there's been great benefits and I think people will kind of hopefully will will kind of see yeah well that's you know the the, 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 the change that they've made that were kind of nearly forced on them and um, that they keep them up you know definitely because they, they'll see that wow I really love that walk now down to the abbey or whatever or you know um, and I really like going to our mails or going to you know for local for local uh, stuff because it, 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 it's such it's so lovely I I because I've been working at home um, as well like a lot of people and getting to really know who Cullen is, is so much better during the week because normally it wouldn't be there, I'd be in, in Newbridge. So it's been lovely, really, really, and getting the value. I always like Cullen anyway, but to re-devalue it even more and meeting people. And so it's just, it's just really, 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 really lovely. But, you know, again, and, and not using the eating local foods, go, get, getting eggs from, from Nick Cullen and, and, um, and, 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 you know, a lo local produce as much as possible. And then, um, yeah, walking everywhere. So using my car. So, I think it's yeah these small little changes. So hopefully, it'll, 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 um, the COVID changes will, will will stay for some people anyway. Be great. Thanks, Liz, again. That was a wonderful talk as well. Thank you. Oh, really. Pleasure. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. And thank thanks you for coming as well. It was great to yeah. people to participate and and um, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. So stay in touch. That's all I can say as well. We, we, there'll be more events coming on there. So. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm. I'm hoping we'll we'll have a few more talks, and we have. Um, we've we've event, an event planned for June mid no end of June. Sorry, but, but we're yeah. still we're still putting that together. So so I won't talk about that. But um, yeah, we're hoping to develop kind of skill sharing, you know, workshops and various things. We 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 do have a lot of um, plans. So. Yeah, definitely watch this space. Okay. Thanks, Liz, and thanks, thanks for everyone. Okay, thanks, really thanks, good. Everyone, thanks everyone Bye. for coming. Thank you. Yeah, see you all. Bye. 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 Good evening. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.